Before I begin this video, this is sponsored by HP, but they did not provide any feedback or give any instructions or reviewer guides or anything for this video. And also they did not review the content of this video before posting. So if that's cool with you, let's get into it. This is the HP NV32. It's an all-in-one PC and it has some crazy specs like a 32 inch 4K display, actual NVIDIA RTX graphics, awesome audio, built-in wireless charger for your phone, and amazing performance no matter what task you throw at it. But first, let's talk about aesthetics. This is an AIO, which stands for all-in-one, meaning the monitor and the internal components are all inside of one device. Kind of a history with the all-in-one computers that most of them are made for convenience and not really for performance. However, HP did not hold many punches this time around. This computer is available in two main configurations for the processor. There's an Intel Core i7-9700 and an i5-9400. There's also a variations of different components. I'm gonna put it here on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So many different things. Kind of a highlight a couple of specs. You can get 32 gigabytes of DDR4, one terabyte SSD with 32 gigabytes of Intel Optane. And you can get up to an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 eight gigabytes. There's so much power when you build this computer and so many different choices. But my configuration is one of the baseline i5 models, which is plenty good for majority of the people. The price range from just under $1,700 to over 3,000 fully kitted out. Prices always change, HP runs sales, so please use my link down below if you do wanna check it out. HP this year has stepped up the aesthetics from the HP NV 13 inch laptop that I've already reviewed to this all in one. It's made out of wood, resin, and fabrics that resemble denim. It may be an acquired taste for some, but I absolutely dig it. I think sitting on this desk, it looks good. The fabric is affixed to that resin and it slides off the frame a little bit, giving that computer sort of a floaty look. There's actually another flap that is under there and that's the same color as the computer, which provides it with this layered look. On the right side under the flap, you'll find the Bang & Olufsen tags for the speakers and we'll talk about that soon. Now under all that, you'll find the base for the 4K screen, but the bottom of the base actually has a little surprise under its belt. It's a Qi charger for your phone. So instead of keeping your phone in your pocket or on your desk, you put it right there on the monitor for a quick wireless charging. The stand does provide some tilting capabilities from minus five degrees to 25 degrees. Many all-in-ones actually offer more flexibility. So if you need to go outside that range, this would not do that for you. Although for me, in most use cases, you kind of keep it within that range. And to me, that's a non-factor, but I did want to mention it. So look, there's a lot going on on the surface, but there is one more tucked away feature and it is the manual pop-up camera. You can use this for face unlock to get into your computer, or you can even do a web call. It's not the best web camera around, but unless you're buying third party, nothing is really that good. It works for calls, people can hear me, people can see me, and it gets the job done. When it's done, you can press it down and it locks back into place. Here is an example of the camera that I just shot a few minutes ago. Okay, so here's the all-in-one webcam. What does it look like? How does it sound? I have no additional lighting, no additional microphone. This is just me talking right now. I think the view is really good, it is nice and wide. You can see the junk all over my desk and the junk behind me, but you can also see all of me all the way down to my waist. So um, yeah, I, I think it looks good. I, I want you to let me know in the comments, how does it look to you, how does it sound? Now, now reminder, compare this to other laptops or other all-in-ones that has a webcam built into it because the quality is comparable to those. Let me know. The MV32 is a 31.5 inch 4K IPS display. It has anti-reflection technology built in which does not remove all the glare, but it does a really good job at minimizing it. The colors are tuned to be on the saturated side. It's enough saturation to keep things interesting, but it's actually not over the top. Everything is very sharp. Text just jumps off the screen and pictures can look a little true to life. It might be a little bit on the sharp side, but once again, you could change that in settings. I will say when streaming a movie or a TV show, it feels like you're watching in high-end TV. 
it really looks that good. I've watched Dark Knight in 4K and a few other clips on YouTube in 4K resolution. I even took 4K footage from my camera just to test it out. You know, watching things that you're very familiar with, you can pick up all the little things. Things to keep in mind when viewing content on this display is that it's 60 Hertz, which gives it a blurring effect with fast motion. I like the blurring effect and it looks more true to life. A lot of TVs come shipped with a true motion setting that makes things look a little bit smoother, and I always turn those things off. It's actually called the soap opera effect. So kind of a real life example, if you put your hand in front of your face and you move it back and forth really fast, it's blurry, you can't keep up with it. Well, what anything with higher hertz, what it does, it tries to extrapolate the frame so you can actually keep it in focus. To me, it looks unrealistic. But this does come into play for gaming, and we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. The monitor has an HDR 600 rating, and I don't have a way to check peak brightness, but HDR looks pretty good. There is excellent separation between dark scenes, bright scenes, and even direct light sources. There are also presets for display modes, so finding the right tone is pretty easy. For me, the default was, like I said before, pretty saturated, but I think it looked pretty good for video and gaming as well. However, as a video editor, I found the native color to be much more subdued and more realistic, and I ended up switching over depending on what I was doing. For video editing, I'm using Adobe Premiere in the Creative Cloud. I was able to scrub the timeline with little to no slowdown, move footage around, adding effects to it, and all that stuff on my footage. I took 11 minutes of 4K footage shot from my Sony a7 III and rendered it out in H.264 coded, and the footage exported in three minutes and 31 seconds, which is really fast. A lot of times I like to see a one-to-one -one ratio, but 11 minutes I exported in three and a half minutes. That is some really good performance. For gaming, I played Battlefield 5 as my main benchmark as that game is graphically intense and I know the game very well. I know what to look for and it's a lot of things going on at once. For this machine, the graphics on board is the GeForce RTX 1650. This is sort of a current generation mid-level card. Since I like gaming and if I was going to purchase this machine for myself, I consider the upgrade to the RTX 2060 for extra $320. There's even an option to go to a 2080, which might be a little overkill. It's $770 and it gives you eight gigabytes of DDR6. Regardless, after updating to the latest game ready drivers, I took Battlefield 5 for a spin. Out of the box, the game recommended medium settings at 1080p resolution. When doing my tests in those settings, the game landed me at around a 50 frames per second, which is respectable. I was able to make some additional tweaks like draw distance and I turned off FPS limiter. I was able to hit 60 frames per second with some dips into the 40s during those scenes where a lot of combat was happening. Of course, I could make further tweaks. I could even move the settings to low and consistently get 60s but I found medium to be some very happy settings. Of course, once again, if I had one of those better graphics cards, I could definitely play the game on the highest settings. The computer does ship with a mouse and keyboard, and the keyboard has a tray on top that allows you to put a cell phone or tablet into it. It also gives you access to the Bluetooth settings so you can switch between different devices for that keyboard. Now, I don't foresee myself using it, but it is a feature that some people may use, especially if they work off multiple devices. The keys do not have a lot of travel and it sounds very clicky. You know, it just feels like a laptop keyboard, which isn't for me, and it isn't something I want for a larger computer. But overall, the keyboard is solid, just not my type of keyboard I like. The mouse is very similar to the keyboard. It's very low profile, shallow clicking depth, it just feels kind of plastically sort of hollow. It's just nothing that I particularly care for. I know I sound like I'm nitpicking, but it's something to me that allows you to interact with the computer, the mouse and keyboard. It's the connection of you to that computer, and I just want a better experience. But of course, you can upgrade a mouse and keyboard. That's not a big deal. Um, if you are interested in the mouse and keyboard I really like, I'll leave a link down below. You can check those out. So if you do want to upgrade your mouse and keyboard experience, you can definitely do that. But for some people, maybe for many people, that mouse and keyboard might be good enough for them. There's one more thing about this computer that I would love to talk about. However, I will let the speakers do the talking. The 
These speakers on board are really good. I'm actually shocked at how great they sound. Usually I would suggest buying some new speakers if you buy a computer, but these are good. For gaming, movies, and music, they sound great and I have no regrets at all. The built-in woofer actually vibrates my table. I mean, it's that good. This video is not gonna do it justice, but if you have a chance to hear these, they sound really nice. HP recognized how good this sounds and this all-in-one computer is actually a Bluetooth speaker too. So if you're on your phone, you can browse to it and find this actual computer in Bluetooth settings, which is really cool to see. All in all, a lot of Windows users have been envious of the iMac all-in-one solution. This is Windows' best all-in-one computer, and it doesn't feel like you're missing out on any great feature. It's configurable to be a beast, or it can be a powerful family computer. It's totally up to you. If you wanna check it out, it's on HP's website, but make sure you hit my link down below if you want to do it, as it helps my channel out greatly. Anyways, guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja, if you like this type of content, hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.